your boyfriend or husband, unfortunately, they don't want you to get hot. They don't want you to find yourself self-worth. They don't want you to start loving yourself. They want to keep you right where you are because that is what they are most comfortable with. This, saying this to people who are vulnerable and naive, that your husband doesn't want you to be hot, doesn't want you to love yourself, doesn't want you to get fit. Who says that? Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today is another anti-MLM video. And just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, it gets worse. This week we have some alarming clips. And as you probably saw from the title, this video's purpose is to sort of demonstrate that people in multi-level marketing will use anything to sell. And I mean anything to sell. So I have a couple clips that I think demonstrate that pretty well. I wanna preface this video with this. The reason why we see so many clips like this is all due to the business model. Recruiting is at the center of the business model. So you're seeing a lot more people who are so desperate to recruit people and they're desperate to stand out in an extremely oversaturated market. So you see people acting desperate. You see people trying to connect on levels that they shouldn't be connecting on. There's parallels that are drawn that should never be drawn. And there's a lot of boundaries that are crossed. And as a result, you see people sort of lose their way. And again, I don't know who these people were before they started these companies. I would like to think that they were not like this, but pretty often you will hear people say things that are not appropriate. And I think this, again, uh, this is gonna be a pretty strong indicator of that. Anyway, without further ado, let's just get right into it. Okay, we have a Monate distributor, and this is actually one of, I guess, their top distributors. And she made an IGTV kind of speaking to any person that is wary about joining Monate. And she's addressing typical objections that people get. And it's like she's speaking to people who have objected before or, or on the fence or something like that. It is what it is, but this is what she had to say. To explain to you, you do have enough time. You don't need to be a salesperson, okay? You don't need to have a following on social media. You don't need to have a bunch of money to start this business. So for all the people that say, I don't have enough time, I wanna tell you guys something. I don't have enough time either. We don't do this business because we have all of the time on our hands, right? We do this business so we can get our time back. Stop trading in time for money. When you're going in and you're clocking in, all you're simply doing is exchanging time for money. That's what society has programmed us to think, how to act. We go to school, we get a job, we clock in, we clock out. That's how we get paid. And I'm gonna teach you a way to get paid where you're not trading that time for money. So you can go spend time with your family. So you can retire your husband from his job. So you can go spend time with your friends. You can travel the world. You know what's funny is Monate and other likewise companies, the farther you get up, maybe you're not trading your own time for money, but you're trading somebody else's time for money. Other people are going out, running themselves ragged, trying to get sales. You get all the commission from that. You know, maybe some aspect of that is true. Doesn't mean that it's ethical. Another thing regarding the time, I want you guys to go look on your phone right now. How much screen time have you spent on social media, on Instagram, on Facebook? And then I want you to think about how much time do I spend watching my Bravo show, shows, Netflix shows, um, you know. So think about if you spent all of those hours creating a future for yourself. I, you know, I have people who are nurses, single moms, going back to school, you know, taking care of their children and they spend an hour doing this and they are rocking the business. So whether you have one hour to give or you have 10 hours to give, this business is a solution for your future. So I want you to think about it. Imagine spending time with your children, being a present parent and also making money while you are doing the things you love. This wording is not very good on her part. You know, just because there's a parent that works outside of the home 
doesn't mean that they're not present. I, I don't agree with that verbiage at all. That's just fucked up. Because that's what we can provide to you. Now, the people that are like, awesome, this sounds great. However, I don't have enough money. I've seen people who were on food stamps rock this business. I've seen people who truly didn't have enough money make things happen. So this is the part where I'm saying they will use anything to try to get people to join the business. What kind of predatory ass business are you in where you're speaking directly to people who are on food stamps? The last thing I would ever want for somebody who's on food stamps is to be scammed by one of these disgusting companies. Disgusting, okay? It is immoral to be speaking to people who are on food stamps and saying that. I want I want you guys to think about it this way. It is the same dollar amount to start this business as it would be to go get a job at Starbucks, okay? When you go get a job bartending at Starbucks or wherever you are, you still have to get your non-slip shoes. You still have to buy your uniform. You still you have to get your apron, okay? By the time that you're done with this whole interview process, you've probably spent about $200. That is the same dollar amount that it would cost you to start this business and you have a untapped income. Starbucks people, comment down below. Did you have to pay for your uniform and your apron? I can understand the non-slip shoes. I had to pay for those when I started working at Sephora, but I got mine at Walmart for $5, okay? Nowhere near a Monate business. And here's the other thing about Monate. You have to order stuff every month to stay active. So it's not just a $200 fee, a $300 one-time fee. When I worked at Sephora, I mean, I'm, I'm just comparing it because that's what I have to compare to. I didn't have to pay for my, my smock, my uniform. None of that. You don't have to pay for that stuff. So if you've worked at Starbucks, please let me know. First of all, do they call you bartenders or do they call you baristas? And then the second thing is, did you have to pay for your uniform and your apron? Let me know. And if you did, did it cost $200 upwards? And did it also cost you your integrity? Let me know. The sky is the limit for you. Another point I would like to make for those that say, I don't have enough money. Are you watching me from a thousand dollar iPhone saying, I don't have enough money to create a revenue stream for my family. Uh, and yet again, you're, you have an apple in your hand right now. Um, you know, so that's just like a point, you know, again, it's about your priorities. Do you want to be a businesswoman? Do you want to secure your future? Do you want freedom? Do you, we only have one life, one life. So make sure you're happy. Make sure you're doing what you want when you want. I can guarantee anybody that doesn't have the money and is also on food stamps, like you say, people who are rocking the business probably don't have thousand dollar iPhones. True priorities would be if you are on food stamps or if you are struggling with money, would be not joining a pyramid scheme business where less than 1% of people ever make a profit. So I'm sick to death of these people who are so patronizing and talking like this to other people. It's just disrespectful her tone, I mean, really. So, you know, I've seen people nanny, I've seen people mow lawns, I've seen people, you know, open up a credit card. And there it is. So she had to say a couple things before she got to the thing that she really wanted to say to people, which is open a credit card, which is what a lot of these people advise you to do. Please don't open a credit card to join a pyramid scheme, okay? Not a good business investment, just saying. So anyway, that was just a couple of things that she said in that video, but promoting to people who ha are on food stamps and giving them like, a false hope that they're gonna make any sort of money and get themselves out of a situation through a pyramid scheme is deplorable. So anyway, we've got another one. So the first clip we're gonna watch is a uh, Beachbody coach and I'm gonna let you watch and then I'll comment as we go along. So here we go. So it says, we found out some really sad news today. Headed to be with family and to support Brandon, her boyfriend, during this time. Thankful to have built a job and life that allows me to take time off whenever I need and the flexibility to work from anywhere. Please send all the love and good vibes. So let me ask you, because I think you know what I'm going to say. What's the bizarre part about this? Okay. Besides the fact that it definitely feels like you're engagement farming and you're looking for attention from people by saying, please send all the love and good vibes and we found, we've found out some sad news. I mean, you're obviously trying to get people to interact with you. Otherwise, why would you post that? What do you think is the weird part about this? Thankful to have built a job in life that allows me to take time off whenever I need and the flexibility to work from anywhere. Okay, 
Couple things about this. Why are you mentioning this? Something obviously happened with your boyfriend that's very sad and you're, you know, so bad that you're going to go see someone and you're driving somewhere to be where somewhere. We're gonna find out later what happened, but you know, why are you mentioning anything about your job? Sad news, promoting the fact that you have so much flexibility with your job. Weird, just, just weird. You would think that true flexibility would be if something is really sad and there's a crisis happening within the family and the friends in the family, you wouldn't have to work, <laughs> okay? That's my first thought, okay? That's just all I have to say. So let's keep watching. Her next post, and this is two hours after she posted this, found out some sad news. She goes, so grateful for the sunshine and this life of freedom I've created over the past year with coaching heart. Let the sun shine. And she's outside by the pool sunbathing. Okay, we still don't know what's going on. So don't worry, we're gonna find out. So grateful for the sunshine and the life of freedom. Okay, still pretty weird. Next post, this is three hours after the initial post about the sad news. She's doing boot camp stuff. She's saying, you were made for more. Here's our recommitment week. Um, here are some women supporting women threads. Here's some accountability groups, messages. Love seeing these babes show up for themselves. And again, this is now four hours after the crisis announcement. Um, she's talking about an amazing virtual community. She's posting all these graphics of transformations, trying to get people to sign up for her boot camp. Hey friends, I just wanted to pop in and thank you for all of the love today. Um, we found out some really sad news. Um, Brandon's dog, 12 years, um, unexpectedly, has a very large tumor in his stomach and um, only has a few days left to live. So it's just been a really hard day. Um, and just for Brandon, like it's truly his best friend. So yeah, I'm just trying to support him. We're here with his family, spending the evening with them and just spending as much time as we can with sweet Peyton. Um, and I just wanted to pop in to just kind of let you guys know what's up and just thank you for all the love. Um, yeah, so anyways. This is now five hours after the, you know, crisis post. She's perfect way to end the emotionally draining day, dreaming of summer and pool and better days. I mean, she's taking a selfie in the hot tub. Maybe wouldn't be something that I'd be doing, but you know, we're all different. She has her alarm clock, it's at 5.05. She says, it's so hard for me to be out of routine during my work week, but I'm so grateful that I'm able to take this time to be with family and here for Brandon. The one thing that keeps me grounded in times of uncertainty or sadness is my miracle morning. So I will not be missing that five o'clock alarm, even though I'm out of routine and away from home. And then she is doing her beach body pre-workout. And she says, so thankful for this natural pre to help me kickstart my mornings, especially when I don't sleep very well. But with that being said, we are spending the day um it's kind of windy sorry uh we're spending the day at brandon's parents house um so he can have some more time with peyton and um i'm just like trying to keep things as normal as possible woke up at 5 a.m even though i didn't sleep well and um did my little miracle morning still got my workout in that seriously brings me so much joy um and i'm just to just have created a routine that's so sacred to me and like no matter how hard life gets or like whatever is going on around me like I am rock fucking solid because like I invest in me every single day like no matter what like nothing will ever change that and it just it does it gives me a lot of pride and just happiness um, knowing that like I'm so solid <laughs> um, and that I can be here to support Brandon and his family during a time that's like so hard so this doesn't sit well with me and then talking about how she's got this rock solid foundation and times of crisis she's not breaking down and and it's all due to her you know setup and her miracle morning and her and her beach body stuff and it's just gross i mean it's gross here's the other thing too it's like why is this all about you you know oh this is my miracle morning and it, it fills me up and this is what i do and i'm keeping things normal for me it's like do you know that your boyfriend's like kind of going through something right now? I mean, <laughs> do you know that you're exploiting this horrible thing that's happening to your boyfriend's dog to promote your business and your lifestyle? 
come on. Anyways, um, despite all of that going on today, something really special happening. We are hosting a coaching sneak peek. I'm doing that with the girls. The newest coach is a part of my team, which I'm so excited to do this with them and just to see them like so much like growing, stepping out of their comfort zone, truly flourishing with coaching um, and how much it has changed their lives in just so, such a short period of time. Look, I don't want to be nitpicky. I don't know this person in real life, but to transition from, yeah, so my, you know, my boyfriend's like dog is going to die to I'm so excited and I'm like, she's so animated all of a sudden. I'm so excited. My girls are having a sneak peek. I'm still showing up for my team despite all of this. It's like, again, this doesn't, it just doesn't seem right. This doesn't seem right at all. Anytime we host coaching sneak peeks or like I bring new girls onto my team, it's just like such a full circle moment of like to see how, you know, 14 months ago I made the decision to start coaching and the ripple effect that's had. You guys, like we have an organization of over a thousand people purpose and passion I've also felt never felt like more solid and like mentally and physically just like healthy and strong if you want to she says all because of coaching come hang out with us tonight to learn more about this coaching thing in our community why are you going on a zoom call tonight I don't get it I don't relate to this at all I don't relate to this at all I don't and then it's uh, next few slides all a bunch of slides about joining the community she's having a team call tonight at 6 30 i mean then she posted again wanted to thank y'all again for all the sweet messages i won't be able to get through my inbox today but promise i'll clear it tomorrow appreciate your patience and understanding while i'm taking this time to be with my family then she posted this today she said, got lots of work to dive into after the past two days away from my office. Thankful I can take my work with me or put it on hold during times of emergency. But you didn't put it on hold. You were still working literally an hour after you announced that you found out there was a crisis in your family. And she also posted this morning, this past week, month was the biggest that my team biz has ever had. I'm sorry, but this is so scummy and it just leaves the worst taste in my mouth that I've had in like a really long time. I mean, to use your boyfriend's dog's prognosis to promote how flexible your lifestyle is, family emergencies to, to promote how great your lifestyle is. I can't imagine and it really just makes me sick. You know, it's a problem and I think about the collateral damage of these businesses. It's like, it's sad for the people that are used as leverage to promote businesses. It's sad. You know, there's a ripple effect with these things and that's ultimately why, I mean, I'll never support them. They're just not ethical. So anyway, let's move on to the next clip. It only gets better from here. And this is another Beachbody coach. This was found by a Reddit user, a very sleuthy Reddit user. And when I saw this, I was shocked. But this is someone who is claiming that infertility is her brand. Yeah. So here we go. If you go through my posts, most of them are um, like funny. I think I'm funny. <laughs> funny, like witty captions. Um, they're random TikTok videos. They're about infertility um, because that's a big part of my brand. Let me just play that back. They're random TikTok videos. They're about infertility. Um, because that's a big part of my brand. Um, because that's a big part of my brand. <sighs> Infertility is a big part of my brand. I'm sure a lot of other people who suffer with infertility love that it's a part of their brand also. What the fuck is wrong with you? By the way, let's talk about the best part of this before we go on to the other clips. There's more. This is on a team call that she had with corporate and she was talking to other people. She was on like a panel of other successful coaches who are in the business. And this is a business call, you know, like the last time that we saw somebody who's using infertility and miscarriage to promote their business in, in a similar fashion, she is also on a business call. And I want to make it very, very clear. Infertility should never be considered your brand. Okay just so everybody knows. So the next clip we're gonna watch, she is again, she is on a call with another person in corporate, different person this time, and she's speaking to a ton of women and she's giving them tips and she's sharing her story. Again, on a business call to make the connection that infertility has anything to do with your business and recruiting people and bringing new people on and connecting with people is gross. So enjoy the clip. 
Um, so medicated cycle rounds, um, got pregnant on the first round. And then um, in November, we lost our baby. So like end of 2019 was probably like the hardest time of my entire life. Um, but I decided that I could either lean the F in. We actually hadn't hit elite in 2019 yet. Um, I didn't have the diamonds until I think it was October or November when I finally had a diamond hold for six weeks. And that was in the midst of losing our pregnancy um, and all that stuff. But I was like, either I can like pull back and, um, you know, take, take the time that I need, which totally, if that's like the type of person you are, and that's, you know, what a lot of people do because, you know, I'm making okay money with volume. So like I can pull back and like, I can focus, I can quote, focus on my team and I don't have to like put myself out there and like recruit and all that stuff, but I don't have to go out and recruit, put myself out there. So she's doing okay with volume. So let me just translate this for people that are not familiar with the MLM jargon. She has enough downline volume where she's cycling and she's getting enough bonuses that it keeps her afloat. Like technically she doesn't even really have to go out and do anything that month. She can do like pretty much the bare minimum and she'll still be making like a decent amount of money. So again, is that really a business that you want to be a part of? Hmm, probably not. But again, she's leaning the F in to her business. I'm just the type of person that I'm like, I have to have, there has to be a purpose to this pain. Like there has to be something. And so I feel like um, in November, I leaned the F into my business and I feel like I am more myself and more like of a leader that I have always meant to be because I did that. And I'm finding more of like my people because I am getting super vulnerable and real on social media about miscarriage awareness and PCOS and infertility and all this stuff. I'm finding people that are my tribe and she's finding people who are her tribe by sharing about infertility and miscarriage again that directly translates to she's finding other people who are suffering with that and she's recruiting them to her business because she's found her tribe same person that thinks infertility is her brand um i feel like 2019 i really wasn't finding that a lot i was recruiting and i was doing all right um, but a lot of my points were coming from people that when I had first started my journey, so when I was in a really vulnerable state, sharing my story, sharing my journey, I was recruiting my tribe. And then like, so when she was vulnerable, she was recruiting her tribe. When she was saying things like, oh, we went through a miscarriage. She's all of a sudden recruiting her tribe. Okay. 2019, I was really trying to figure it out. Like, you know, what, it, what is my story? How am I relatable? Like none of this makes sense anymore. And then all of a sudden, like, all of a sudden we came into another vulnerable part of my story and I just leaned in and I feel like, um, my team, like I'm having one of the best months that I've ever had recruiting wise, um, and with success club points. And I just feel so much more aligned to my business now, even after like the hardest six months of my life. Um, so yeah, that's like my story in a nutshell, I guess. <laughs> So I wanna point something out about this. Not only is it just disgusting and deplorable that she's now preying on people who have similar circumstances to her, which is that they either had a miscarriage, PCOS, or infertility, but I wanna point out that she had the best business month um, when she started to do this thing, when she started to find these people who connected with her in this unique way. And I wanna point out that in the first clips that we watched of the girl that was using her boyfriend's dog's prognosis to promote her business, she also said that she's having the best week and month of her business career. Why do you think that is? Just just something I want to bring up. So here is the next video. This is also another business call. All of these are business calls. I don't know why I'm saying that. These are all team calls. And she is like the guest speaker and she's asked to talk about how she is such a whiz at adding, connecting, inviting, stuff like that. So here is what she has to say. Remember that it's not followers that matter, it's engagement, okay? So like, if you guys like go look at people's pages, um, there'll be like mommy bloggers that have like 50,000 followers and they're getting like 20 likes on a photo. So that's where you can kind of tell like their followers aren't really their tribe. It's not just algorithms. It's like their followers just aren't their people um, or their fake followers. So you really want to focus more on engagement, but you also want to get followers that are your tribe so you can have people to invite um, to your stuff. So, so the reason why I showed this clip is because in the last video, she talked about how 
Once she started to share about her infertility and her miscarriage, she found her, quote, tribe, right? So in this video, she's saying, look, you need engagement. You need to find people who are your, quote, tribe, okay? Same verbiage, your tribe, because then you'll have people to invite to. So I just want to make it very, very, very clear. She wants people who are also infertile and have experienced miscarriages because those are her quote tribe and because they're her tribe, she gets better engagement from them because they feel like they can relate to her and they know her and they can trust her so then she can invite to them. Tell me again how this is not predatory. You can't convince me it's not, okay? You can't convince me it's not. Um, And then hashtags. So this is like everybody's question is hashtags all the time. Like, do hashtags actually work? Is shadow banding real? How many can I use? Like, all these things. And I don't have all the answers. But I can tell you what's working for me. Um, there's an app called Smart Hash. It just helps you find similar hashtags and create, like, a set of them. So if you put, like, hashtag fitness, it's going to show you similar hashtags to hashtag fitness. And you can post them in the comments or in the caption. I found that they work both. Um, so I posted like this transformation picture, like a couple, like a week ago. If you go, if you have a business profile, you can click view insights and this bar pops up and you can swipe up and under like discovery, it says discovery. And then it has like where you're getting your engagement from. It says from home, from profile, from other, from hashtags. It's telling me that over 6,000 impressions have been from my hashtags. So that tells me that those hashtags I used on that post are working because over 6,000 of the impressions, which means like people that saw the post, um, are coming from the hashtags. So that's how you can kind of see if hashtag sets are working. So anyway, I showed those clips because I wanted to make a point here. And that point is that she does use hashtags and she utilizes them to gain new followers and to gain impressions and to find new people to find her tribe, right? And she, you know, is looking at the impressions. She's seeing which ones work. She has experience, you know, figuring out which ones are lucrative to her business, okay, on social media, where this all occurs. Interestingly, in her bio, she has that she's a teacher turned business owner. She has keeping the faith through hashtag infertility and hashtag miscarriage, praying emoji, angel baby emoji. She has sweat slash shop with me, and then she has a link to her, all of her Beachbody links. So in her bio, hashtag infertility, hashtag miscarriage. So it looks to me like she found two hashtags that ended up working for her. Gotta love it. If that's your brand, then okay. But I wanna show you one more. And I've been shadow banned before and it sucks. And you have to like stop using hashtags for like two weeks and all this crazy stuff. But, um, so hashtags are a good way to, I think hashtags are a good way to attract people. Um, I don't necessarily think they're a good way to find people, especially if you're using like fitnessy hashtags because fitness people use fitness, ha fitness hashtags, right? People that aren't into fitness, they're looking at the hashtags. They're not using them. So people will find you through those hashtags, but people aren't going to, um, be using them for you to find them, if that makes sense. So anyway, I had to show you that last clip because it also reiterates a point that I just made, which is she uses hashtags to attract people, not to find people herself. She uses them to attract people. So people who are looking up infertility, miscarriage, you know, probably looking up support groups or people who are going through similar circumstances, she is finding those people and attracting them to her page. She has it in her bio and she also is claiming that it's her brand. So she's taking it full on. She has accepted this is, you know, this is her. This is the essence of her is this infertility thing. Uh, as we discussed earlier, also she is on a business call and all of these. So she is telling these people, look, this is, you know, what I do and I share and this is how I attract people. So anyway, yeah, this is just downright immoral. I mean, she's been doing this for a very long time and this is what she's advising other people to do. So it's really not hard to imagine why the culture that Beachbody has created, these MLMs have created, is the way that it is and why you see this across the board. A lot of people are doing this. A lot of people are abusing, you know, certain life events and, and using it as leverage to get people to join their pyramid scheme. So anyway, I had to show you that one. Obviously it's very concerning and it's just gross. All right, 
final video and I may have saved the best for last. This is wild. We've seen stuff from this girl before. She's back at it. So I'm just going to let you listen and then I will do some commentary in between. Y'all know what time it is. All right. So Matt said something to me last night that really reminded me and kind of not just reminded me, but just sparked this topic that I am very passionate about um, talking about. So hold on one sec. Hold on. So last night I looked at the clock and I was like, oh shit, it's 11. I gotta go to bed. And Matt's like, well, why don't you like watch another episode with me? And first of all, I was tired of shit. So when I'm tired, I want to go to bed. Like, I feel like the perks of an adult is you can, yes, you can stay up until whenever you want, but you can also go to bed whenever you want to. So, um, I was like, no, like I, I get up at 615 in the morning. I need to go to bed. And he's like, well, you don't have to like wake up at 615, you know, like you work from home you're going to be home, you can get your workout done whenever. And I'm like, no, this is this is when I want to get my workout in. And he like started arguing with the fact that I wake up at 6 a.m. And I forgot where I was. And we weren't really like arguing, but he just like kept trying to I guess, argue with the fact that I really don't have to go to bed and I really don't have to wake up early. And no matter what I was saying, he, like, wasn't getting it. He's like, I don't do whatever you want. Like, like why Why do you have to get up so early? Why don't you just sleep in and, and continue watching TV with me? Um, no. So this brings me to my next talk about... It not mattering what other people think of your journey and the thing and the things that you want to do. Matt doesn't have to understand. So let me just recap and let me get this straight. She had a conversation with her husband the night before and he was like, you don't really have to wake up at that time. Why do you have to wake up? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever. Stupid. But then she goes, this brings me to my point. You know, it doesn't matter what other people think of your journey. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm from a different camp. But I think that if you're in a relationship, I think that your partner's opinion of you or, you know, what they think of what you're doing, I think that it does hold some weight. There's an aspect of what she's saying that might be true in some circumstances, but when it comes to major financial situations or decisions or quitting your job or starting a new job, I think that it is good to have someone weigh in like somebody that loves you unconditionally and cares about you and and your life decisions I, I don't think there's a problem with that and it's just strange that she came to this conclusion after having a conversation with her husband you know maybe if you had like a conversation with a friend or whatever and you're like okay it doesn't matter what this person thinks of me whatever that's one thing but your husband kind of weird that doesn't have to understand why i want to wake up at 6 15 while both of them are still sleeping upstairs to get my workout in. He doesn't need to understand that. And that kind of brings me to my next thing. One of my biggest pet peeves is when I'm talking to someone about joining my boot camp and they are like, okay, I have to ask my husband. And as soon as I hear that, I kind of go, oh boy. Oh boy. Because Indigestion. nine times out of 10, Unfortunately, they come back saying, my husband said no. It's your biggest pet peeve when people talk to their husband because nine times out of ten, according to her, they come back and they say, my husband says no. Oh, sometimes I think that our counterparts, and I know this is true, you know, myself included and feel free to weigh in. But sometimes I think our counterpart can see things that maybe we can't see. And sometimes they're more perceptive than we are. And I think it's good to get a second opinion always on most things in most situations. My husband said that um, if I can start doing it by myself, then I can join. My husband said I don't need it. And oh my God, it makes me cringe. Because here's the thing. 
if it is not a financial issue, there should be no if, ands, or buts on whether you can do this for yourself. Do you also ask your husband um, permission to wipe your ass after you take a poop? Um, sorry, no, but you don't. Why do you need to ask permission to work on yourself? And for your husband to say no to that? Mm. A couple points that I want to make here. Uh, I think when people come back and they say, oh, well, their husband, you know, so I, my husband's with that now or whatever. I think that that's typically just somebody who's, you know, put, putting the blame on their husband because it makes it easier to say no to somebody else. Do you know what I'm saying? They're just like, oh, my husband said no. My husband said I can't go to this party because I don't really want to go. You know, I think that that is usually what the case is. But it's funny that she, I don't think that she realizes that. And she just assumes that these are all just downtrodden women who can't speak up for themselves. But anyway, by the way, that, that cup that she's drinking out of is so disgusting. I'm sorry. It's just, ugh, it's giving me, it's like really making me, ooh, it's like giving me the, it's giving me the chills. So again, if it is not a finance, a financial issue and a husband says no, I don't want to tell you how like a marriage should be or whatnot, but I do know that I feel as though, in my personal opinion, that is a form of abuse where he is controlling you. And, you know, if you want to do something like this for yourself and you want to try it out, there should be no reason, financials aside, that you shouldn't be able to do it. Stop. Now, a form of abuse. Stop. Now stop it. All right, seriously, like seriously. A form of abuse. Here's the thing. She says, look, I'm not trying to tell you, you know, how a marriage should be because apparently she's got the most perfect marriage. But, okay, she goes on to say, if your husband tells you no about joining a pyramid scheme where less than 1% of people ever turn a profit it's a form of abuse now i have a problem of course you know there's there's a multitude of things that are wrong with what she's saying like just surface level multitude of things wrong but when you're telling people that who are watching you and it's a naive woman who's down on life and she's looking for answers looking for purpose and she maybe might want to join beachbody and her husband said no and you're telling that woman who is already very naive and maybe gullible and vulnerable that her husband's abusing her if he says no she might believe that to turn people against their significant other in the name of signing up for your beach body to plant that seed in their head, I just don't have a word for it. I don't, I can't think of a word for something like that. If you're wondering how this clip fits into the video, turning people's loved ones against them and to try to like put your opinion and plant this seed of doubt in people's heads over Beachbody, over joining your group, like let it go. If somebody tells you no, let it go. Just stop, that is disgusting. In the name of Beachbody, they will use anything. They'll do anything, they'll say anything. I mean, it's disgusting, seriously. I didn't, I didn't, I have never like asked, asked Matt in my life for like two big purchases. Yes, of course, we talked about the fridge before we bought it. I, we talked about my laptop before we bought it. That is normal um, marriage things. But it was, first of all, my money when I first started, and I needed I, I needed a change. I did not ask Matt permission if whether or not I could do this. I was at my rope's end, and I told him after, hey, I'm doing this thing. I would consider joining Beachbody to be a, a major life purchase. $200, even $100, is, that's a lot of money to people. But here's the thing, guys. It's not just like this initial investment, like I said. You, you have to pay for Shakeology and, and all this shit to c remain active. And this is a lot of money. People go into a lot of debt. I get messages every single day. I'm $800 in debt. I'm $1,200 in debt. Like it's not just this, oh, it, you're, it's a one-off $200 purchase, which by the way is a lot of money. $200 is a lot of money. It just is. I don't care if you're a freaking billionaire. I mean, I really don't. It is for, for the majority of people. It is. So to start like a new venture and just to not communicate with your significant other, I just, I don't agree. I don't agree. And I think that it's wrong that she's kind of promoting like 
just join this without even telling him. Like, no, <laughs> don't. You know, he didn't flip out. He wasn't like, oh my God. Blah, blah. He has always been like super supportive of the things that I want to do, the things that I want to buy. Um, so I guess I just assume that other marriages should be the same way. Assumes other marriages should be exactly like yours. Stop it. Just stop. Oh my God. Giving relationship advice when she thinks that every relationship should be the same as hers. Anyways, I feel like I'm getting way off track of what I actually want to say here. It is not your boyfriend or husband's decision on whether or not you can take care of yourself. Okay? It is... Your boyfriend or husband has no right to tell you that you don't fucking need it. Your husband or boyfriend Look how has mad she no is. right oh my to God. control what you can and cannot do with your body. Time. It, with your body? <laughs> extra time. If you want to do this, there is a reason you want to jump in with me. There is a reason that you want to get started. So... To build all of that up and get so excited and then turn to your husband and be like, can I do this, please? And him be like, no, you don't need it. That's fucking fucked up and that's bullshit. So if it is not a financial issue, there should be absolutely no reason why you cannot do this. This is not their journey. This is your journey. This is your life. Would you consider it to be a financial issue? when less than 1% of people ever make money in that? Would you also consider it to be a financial issue paying, okay? Paying an exorbitant amount of money when you can get the workouts for free on YouTube. There's free workouts everywhere. I guarantee that's probably what a lot of the husbands are telling them is like, wait, can't you just get that on, can't you just get that on YouTube? <laughs> like, she's too narrow in thinking that Every time somebody goes and asks their husband and their husband says, oh, probably not a good idea. He's like abusing her. Like, you know, it's just, this is crazy. This is wild. These are your feelings that you're feeling. And this is your change you want to make. So when it finally is time to make a real decision on if you're going to do this or not, why are you placing all of your eggs in your husband or boyfriend's basket on whether or not you can actually do this. Stop. I mean, she's really trying to turn these women against their significant other. Wow. Wow. Ooh, wow. Again, I understand if financials come into play. That's a whole different ballpark. If you guys cannot afford it and it's reasonable. And it's reasonable. Okay. So it, it's got to be approved by her. Is this reasonable? Oh, you can't afford it, but is it reasonable? By my definition, okay, then I will, I officially elect you as not being abused by your husband. But if it's not financial and reasonable in my eyes, that's abuse. Now, now stop, I mean. <laughs> of course, like no is an acceptable answer for now. Um, if you guys can't afford it right now, but. If for now. If you guys are not struggling and you guys can spare, that and he still says no that's what's fucked up about it even if you're not struggling and you're like doing fine like you're doing fine you're good why would you put yourself in a position where you could potentially be struggling by paying all this money for these things that you can just get on the internet on youtube <laughs> oh, if you're not struggling then you need to be doing this it's like no if you're not struggling then you should probably just stay where you are because you're doing good thanks bye you shouldn't have to ask permission for yourself. You're doing this for you and yourself only. I have been in that type of relationship where it was very one-sided. So, you know, I have talked to women who, you know, I explain that to them. Like, if there's no financial issues, then like, I don't understand what the problem is. Maybe you don't understand because you're not in their relationship. Maybe, maybe that's why. Oops. They, I had one person like, yeah, like, you know what? He gets to go golfing during the summer. He gets to do all these things. And he's telling me no, that I can't do this for myself. I'm doing it anyways. Oh my God. So she's got an example 
of a time she turned someone against their husband. Mm, that's healthy. And I was like, hell yeah, I support that. Of course you support that because you're getting her money. Of course you support that. Of course you do. You support people being healthy. Total health is, again, it's a multifaceted thing. Total health, being in a relationship where there's give and take, communication, and you're advising people to not communicate. Mm, gotta love it. No. Gotta love it. There's just so many relationships out there where what you can do is very one-sided. The one person, they can do what they want, they can spend money, they can go where they want, but every time you want to do the same, it's a fight and it's... Stop putting all of your eggs in your boyfriend or your husband's basket on whether or not you can you can do this because they don't feel how you feel. They don't know what you think about. And you know what? You, they don't need to understand why you want to do it. They don't. They don't have to support you at first. That's okay too. You know, you are doing this for you and yourself because you need it. You need it. Ooh, okay. You shouldn't have to wait for permission from your significant other to start working on you. Mm -mm. A small percentage of the time is your boyfriend or husband, unfortunately, they don't want you to get hot. They don't want you to find yourself self-worth. They don't want you to start loving yourself. They want to keep you right where you are because that is what they are most comfortable with you doing. All of that stuff we saw before, not good. Not good, right? This, though. Saying your boyfriend and husband, if they say no to this beach body thing, it's because they don't want you to be hot to find yourself, to love yourself. Now again, remember what I said about naive people are often the people who are joining these pyramid schemes. Saying this to people who are vulnerable and naive, that your husband doesn't want you to be hot, doesn't want you to love yourself, doesn't want you to get fit. Who says that? And then at the bottom she says, when you find your self-worth, sometimes you realize the dude you're with ain't shit, lol. Let me just remind you, this is all in the name of Beachbody. It's, this is all sparked because some people were telling her no for her boot camp. You know, it just doesn't get any better than that, does it? Just doesn't get any better than that. This is wild. I mean, please weigh in in the comments below. What do you think? Do you agree? Disagree? I think you know how I feel. So anyway, to wrap this video up, because it's been a long one, these people will do and say anything to get your money, to get you to sign up. They will turn you against your loved ones, which is something that actually happens, you know, as an unfortunate byproduct anyway from joining these things. They will use infertility to get into your inner circle, to gain your trust, to make it feel like they're relatable to you. And you see this at an alarming rate with MLMs, that's all I'm gonna say. And again, it's due to the business structure, it's due to the business model. I don't know why people can't just join a business, start a business where all you do is sell products, the old fashioned way. Just sell products. Why do you have to recruit people? Why, why do you have to do it? Why can't you just sell stuff? If you really love your product that you're selling, just sell it. Why do you have to recruit all these different people? And I am sick of it. I mean, I, I get here week after week after week and I'm just as mad as I was the last week because it will never get old to me how gross these things are. So anyway, that's it. I'm done today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you like these kind of videos. Leave a like, it helps my channel out. And if you want to, you can share this video and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.